Ohio in the building, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ohio in the building. Gabe, what's good, my G? How, how's it going, man? Oh, man, it's just, I'm just blessed, man. Blessed to be out here. Man, I, you know? I, I, I see. I, I, I see. You showed your, um, you showed your, uh, your inmate ID. And seven years later, you, you, you jumped into the, uh, into the world of CDL, man. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Seven years, set seven years down, though, man. Let's uh, let's let's start. Let's start in the beginning, man. So introduce yourself and um, you know, and talk to us before you got into trucking. Okay, yeah. My name is uh, Gabriel Williams. I mean, you call me Gabe, but uh, I'm from Akron, Ohio. Uh, 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 home, home of LeBron James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> home of LeBron. You know? Okay, and, okay. Uh, 37 years old, but before before I uh, got into this trucking, I was saying, before I got into this trucking, you know, just like most people in the inner city, I was running in the streets, you know, getting in trouble, really just basically selling drugs, had the uh, mindset, I'm going to make all this money selling dope and in and out of prison, you know, was doing, was doing pretty good for myself besides that, though, but around 30, I'm like, man, I'm like, I, I need to really... Because, you know, put it like this, a million dollars in the streets or a hundred thousand in the streets, you can't really do nothing if you ain't got nothing behind it. So I always had that mindset, like, I need to get off into something else. I need to get into something else. So at the time, this was a probably like 2014, I'm like, man, I'm going to buy some houses. I'm going I'm to do the house thing. I done had a couple before, but now it's like I'm really going to take it serious. Okay. 2014. 2014, I catch a serious case. Some some guys try to uh, run in my house. Me and my kids was there, and you know, uh, I mean, the case is over now. But I end up shooting one of the guys. The gun jammed on me. You know, God was on his side, and I wasn't able to keep shooting. But long story short, after they get out the house, the police run in my house. The my neighbors, lo and behold, to me, my neighbors called the cops. Police running in the house, and they running out the house. And I get knocked with a brick and a half of cocaine. So I uh the case drug off for like a year and I end up finally uh copping out. I copped out for seven years. While I'm incarcerated. Oh, go ahead. All right, all right, man. So yeah, the the, the, the drug game was 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 it, it it is what it was with with the drug game. And I'm glad that, you know, nothing you know, nothing serious you know, happened to you in the midst of, uh, in the midst of the guys running up in your house. But, uh, of course, you know, you, you, I, I guess you was moving a little bit of weight that got your name out there and a couple of, and a, and a couple of stick up kids try to try, try to come up and, uh, try to take you out. Well, well, like most things, you know, it's always, a lot of times it's always an inside job. And I, I ain't gonna call them kids because these was grown men that was older than me, you know. But uh, yeah, more more importantly, did nothing happen to my children uh, that was in the house at the time. But you know, so so these guys, story. so these guys was pretty much uh, the, you 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 was down with these cats. I mean, what, what? no, 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 I, I I wasn't down with them. They just so around the neighborhood, older, washed up, you know mad at life and somebody put up somebody within my circle got mad at me and you know you know how that goes sent them my way it's it's kind of messed up to it's kind of messed up to do you know to do some ill stuff it's always better to do it by yourself man i mean i i I was learned you know i i was taught that years ago that you know when when it when you put a crew together to, to to try to do something to try to make something happen, it's always one in the midst that's not that that's not feeling that they you know getting treated some kind of way. They're not they're not getting no money. They just feel like they're not you know. And 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 in in your situation, you know, somebody was to the point to try to like literally take you out man and that's 
Yeah, definitely. And in the grand scheme of things, take me out over something that in the grand scheme of things wasn't even that much. But, you know, I, I look at it now as a blessing. Like, some people can say, wow, you just had seven years of your life taken away. But my life is still here, and it wasn't taken away. I continued to grow while I was in prison. And that's what led me to start opening my mind up, like, man, what else can I do? And I just got to, got to focusing on trucking. Like, I said, what is, what at my age, at the age of 30 at that time, what can I do? What is the quickest thing that I can learn to make the most amount of money? And trucking was it. I'm like, well, five, uh, a five-week class, I can, I can really get some money. Okay, that's what's up. So, so the, the cops ran up in there, uh, you know, as the guys was running out. Uh, cops ran up in there. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm assuming guns drawn and everything. Uh, kids, you know, kids in the background crying. What was, what was yeah. the commotion like at that time when the cops came up in there? Well, they, the, the, the stick up dudes, they, it was a couple of them. So they, they shooting back, they get up out of there. So they little car ride off or whatever. I'm trying to get the kids together. They crying. I'm trying to get everybody together. I was kind of on a, I, 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 if you see where, I, where the spot was at, it was damn near a death trap. I'm on a dead end, abandoned house, this craziness. That's a whole other story why I was in that spot at the time anyway. But, um, yeah, as I'm getting them together, probably like 10 minutes later, the I just see some cars shoot. I got cameras in the house. I see the cars shooting up. I said, oh, my God. I said, in my mind, I'm like, how did they get who, How did they get here that fast? You know what I'm saying? And it was just, yeah, they just came in. And we got a, we got a reporter, some shooting over here. And I tried to, you know, stop them at the door. No, I wasn't no shooting. No, uh, they wasn't hearing it. Came up in there, cuffed me up in front of my kid. And they said, uh, they was just looking around. They said they still had to get a warrant, but they was going to stand right there and wait until the warrant came. So I'm cuffed up in front of my kids. The warrant came, and the rest is history. Lo and behold, they 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 found what they needed to find to take uh to take to take issue. What was the uh what was the charges uh what what was the charges altogether that was brought upon you? I had uh I had drug trafficking, drug possession, uh, weapons under disability. And child endangerment. Um, like you from Ohio too, they didn't charge me with shooting dude. They had right at that time, now in Ohio they got a uh, self defense law, but at that time all they had was the castle rule. Meaning the castle law was if anybody come in your house trying to uh harm you, you allowed to meet them with the with, with harm back, you know? So right. now I'm 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 mad my neighbor called the cops, but that's kinda what saved me because my neighbor put the call in, and that's on record. He said, the man with some mask is about to run in this man's house right here. So they knew what was going on. Like, they already knew what was popping. It was a robbery going on. So I never got charged with shooting that man. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so, of course, you went to court. Was was this a... Uh... Was this a in front of the judge type deal, or you had... You, you, you had... Uh, uh, you you had like uh, what do you call it? What what do you call it? The jury? You you had a jury or or? No no no. I would <laughs> I would take it at the trial. I, you know, I'm only thing I would take the trial is something I ain't do. You know what I'm saying? I'm like man, I'm caught red handed. All I can do is pay this lawyer and try to get the best deal. That's it. Uh, I wasn't about to take that to trial. All right, all right. So, of course, uh, the the best deal that that was offered to you was uh was the seven years. You being in Ohio, yeah. so they they sent you up to Mansfield. No, uh, you know when you when you in Ohio, either you go the first stop after you you get sentenced, you either go to Lorraine if you on one side of the map. If you are on the other side of the map, you gonna go down to Columbus to CRC. So I went to Lorraine. After Lorraine, I went to a prison called North Central, which is in Marion, Ohio. Got kicked out of there. I got kicked out of uh, North Central. They sent me to a got supermax in Youngstown. Wait, wait, hold up. Br How the hell you get kicked out of prison? I mean, just 
you know, it's, I mean, it's a number of reasons. It's just I got into it with a, a correctional officer, you know, but sent me there. Uh, I, w- I moved from there. I went to Toledo, and then I finally left from a prison, another prison in Youngstown uh, called CCA. God damn! How many how many motherfucking prisons is in Ohio, bro? I only thought of Mansfield. Damn, where did these where did these prisons Ohio. come from? You know, Ohio. This is jail state. That's that's their thing. Lock them up. That's what they do. God damn! So you 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 went from what was the first one? The what was the first one you went to? Uh, North Central. All right, so North Central, you say that's in Marion, Ohio. I guess that's in the yeah. boom. That's that must be somewhere in the boom fields or some shit like that. Uh, it's it's kind of it's in a neighborhood of Marion. Uh, they got, I mean, they got houses and stuff. I mean, it ain't it ain't like city city, but it ain't it ain't in the farmland. Well, it's it's far away. If your ass decided to to escape, you won't be getting home no time soon. I can tell you that much, huh? <laughs> nah, nah, hey, it's love. All right, so so from Miriam, what what happened to you? What what happened to you uh, in Miriam to, to to be moved to the other prison? Just an uh, altercation with a with a uh, staff member there. Uh, got into it. Like one thing about me, I, I don't, I never really got into it with no inmates. It's just the staff and. We get it, you know. When I when, when I'm in prison, you know, like in prison, like people getting money, you know what I'm saying. It was, it was an incident with a cell phone, and uh, basically, I tried to run from the CO. I had my cell phone, tried to run, and she ended up she tripped and fell. But she put it. She put a report in and said I pushed her. Okay, so, so let person. let me uh, let me let me stop you right there because I I I need to know. I I, I need to know, man. Help me out. Help me. Help me understand this because I I I've seen a TikTok video of inmates with with cell phones and accounts like that doing TikToks, IGs, and and all this other sort of stuff, bro. How the hell you get a cell phone in prison, bro? I mean, you know they it, it, the prison they they got the phones in there, man. They they in there, man. Just you know this. Hey, in there, if you got the money, put it like this. If you got the money in jail, you can get whatever you want. Man, I, I always wondered that. Like, bruh, like, how the hell there's there's a cell phone in prison? And my uh, and my other thing, too, was, you know, I, I guess I was in my feelings because they, they would come on and try to make jail, like, this this happy go lucky place, bro. Jail ain't happy go lucky, man. I no, mean, it, it, it's definitely it, it's definitely not. And like you said, you got some. See, I had a phone my whole seven years. The whole time I, I was not without a phone. But you got some guys that's looking up TikTok, and then you got other people like me. I'm looking up what an NFT is. I'm looking up how to do the pre trip maneuvers on on trucking. I'm I'm looking at uh. Pre trip inspection. How do I do this? I'm I'm in my cell practicing shifting gears. You know, okay, okay. dudes looking at me like they 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 looking at me like, what is you doing, bro? I'm like, man, I'm getting ready to drive this truck. I'm getting ready to drive this truck. You know what I'm saying? And that's where my mind was. You, you got some dudes making TikToks and want to hit that girl up at three in the morning. Who, who over there? What you doing? And you got some people that's really focused on. Uh, let me learn how to get my credit right. Let me let me learn about this and that because you don't have nothing but time on your hands so some people utilize it and some people are just playing okay that's what's up man that's what's up bomb drop for that man let me give you a bomb drop for that because you 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 took an item that you're not supposed to have but you made it work in in your behalf so that's what's up man so your first the, the you know considering that you know you 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 was a street dude you had your freedom. Now that your freedom is taken from you, how was it the very first night that 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 you got up in 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 the jail or in the prison, bro? Well, like I said earlier, like this this you know I've been in and out of prison. You know what I'm saying as an adult, but this this time hurt the worst because it was like the police wasn't on my trail. I had a lot. I was sitting on top of the world. I had everything in front of me. 
So it was like, this really hurt the worst because it was like, wow. I I wasn't even doing, like, I wasn't, I, I could I could say it was reckless, but in my mind, I'm like, I wasn't doing anything reckless. I wasn't out at the clubs. I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, out like this. I got took down from within. So, and I, and I, at the time, you know, I had two, uh, two new kids and it was just like, man, like I'm really about to go away. For I'm about to be gone. I'm looking at the calendar like, man, I got seven more of these to do. You know what I'm saying? One, another year go by, you're like, I got six more of these to do. You were thinking, some, sometimes you were thinking in your head, you were like, man, next year at this time, I'm still going to be in jail. Like, just little stupid little thoughts. But, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's crushing. Anybody that say it, it, it's sweet on, oh, yeah, it was cool. Like, they, they is insane for real. Like, it ain't nothing cool about somebody telling you what to do all day long. <laughs> Man, what 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 year did you to do your seven? What year did you go in, and who was the president at the time? When I went in, it was two thousand and fifteen. I think Barack Obama was the president. I think he still was. And then you can't. Then who was the president when you came out? Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I missed that. I missed the whole Trump. I missed the whole Trump thing. I missed that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, so at the time, you know, you 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 figured that, you know, you wanted to change your life. You wanted to get back on a on the right track, and of course, you knew that it wasn't no four hundred one k for a hustler. So at all at that so at that time during that time you was in jail and everything you you was doing everything you needed to do to to get yourself right when you got out here uh when you got back out so you back out you came back out you you did your bid is it true uh what my what my man say on the wire and I'm going to take this uh I'm going to take this uh cue you only do two. T- you only do two days in the time you come in and the time you come out. Man, uh, you only remember two days. The time you go in, the time you go out. Yeah. You only got the one day left, huh? You done the one. You just gotta do that other. It's like they say. You only do two days. It's the day you go in. The day you come out. Nah, hell, nah. Just you know, people just be talking for real. Like, uh, like I say, I. Over the, over the years, it was all about growth and development for me. How could I better myself? And this, I might, even though seven years, seven years long to us out there, but in prison, when you around guys that got uh, five life sentences or you around guys that ain't never coming home, like, sometimes you want to keep your, like, you keep your mouth shut. You're like, man, I ain't about to complain about my time. This dude right here, he only, shit, he only 19. He got, uh... <laughs> He got forever today, or damn, his PO ain't even born yet. His PO in the third grade right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, seven years is long to us out here, but in prison, that's that's a short amount of time for real. So I don't know. I did 14 years. Well, yeah, you know, you did you a little stretch. It was like I really had to. I knew I had to get focused in that little bit amount of time because you got guys that got that time and they playing the whole time. It's it's a big party to them. They in there drinking, smoking, uh, getting all the tattoos in the world and stuff like this. And then when it's about six months to go home, they oh, I gotta get focused. See, I, the day coming in, I'm like, man, I gotta be focused. The day coming in, first day. All right. Ain't no plan. Like you, you that's, gotta we gotta really, you know, get, get this in order. That's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Shout out again to you for uh, doing what you needed to do. All right, man. So you you you. Well, let me ask you this before I ask. Uh, what, what, you know, what was it like being out? But how? What kind of effect that had on your kids? Because you know, seven years. I'm I'm assuming if your kids was like three, seven years, they're they ten now. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, they, they 10 or whatever the age they are. What, what kind of effect did that have on your kids being away from them so long? 
Yeah, it definitely, definitely had, had a devastating effect. You know, shout out to my mom and you know, uh, other friends that really held it down for me. But it was definitely a devastating effect. Because just like, like I said, out here seven years is long to us. Seven years is eternity to a child. Just think back when you was younger. Shit, a month, your mom tell you, yeah, uh, next month we going here. That's, it seemed like eternity. So to tell a little child, like, yo, the dad going to be home at seven, like, that got to be crushing. So the effect, I'm still building that bond. I've only, I've only been home four months. I'm still building that bond back with my children, you know. I keep my son with me all the time. Uh, I got two, oh, I got two other girls. I got an 18 year old, and it was just the, the effect of just going through life without your dad being there, you know. And it, it, it was just it, that's a devastating effect, man. Just now, to the now, kids. Now, it, now you say you got your son with you. So being that your your daughter is 18, she was what you, you she was what 11 when you went yep, in. Yep, she was How? 11. Yep. Uh, again, I know, I I know, I asked you how how did it affect the kid, but how did it affect the girl though? Like, I mean, because like females without their fathers, they 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 sort of you know kind of like kingy to another dude as a father figure. How did that? Yeah, how shut up, shut up. how did that affect? Shut how up, did man. that affect your daughter though? I mean, did I hope she didn't turn out right. that way? But how how, how did that affect uh, her? She, you know, it definitely affected her emotionally. But shout out to the mother of my daughter. She really held it down. And, you know, with the visits for her to come see me and, you know, uh, like I have back to the phone, having the phone, being able to FaceTime and talk. Like, so it was never no extended amount of time we didn't talk or was able to see each other. You know, um, she doing great. She about to graduate from school, looking at colleges and stuff. But, it, it, you know, it's definitely, uh, you know, definitely uh, something that we're still re rebuilding on and getting relationships back built. You know, definitely, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely take some time for real. But all in all, God, God, you know what I'm saying, all praises of God, all my children are pretty much, they're fine, they're great. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So again, another bomb drop for that one. Man. Um, all right. So now you're out. Uh, you know, you now you out. You got your life changed. You decided to get your uh, you decided early to get your CDL. You you got out and you 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 done what you said you was gonna do. Where did you did did you go to a school to get your CDL or did you go through uh did you go through a company to get your CDL? I went through a school um back back to being in prison. I'm back in prison. I'm watching all the trucking videos. I'm watching the pre trip inspection, the brake, uh, the maneuvers. I'm learning about the truck. I'm learning about the trucking game. I'm watching all the trucking YouTubers and uh, the dispatch. I'm learning the game of the trucking because me. I didn't know anything about trucking. Like I didn't know nothing about trucking at all. So then I started looking up trucking schools, got to calling different ones. I called one. They wasn't really feeling me. You know what I'm saying? So I called this other school and shout out to the lady. Man, she 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 really showed me some love. I went to the school. Uh, it's a college, but they got a trucking school there, Stark State. And I'm talking to the administrator, the lady who run the trucking, and we were just building back and forth. And she like, well, when you get out, you know, just come see me and I'm going to get you in there. So I done, look, I done looked up the date for the first class to start around the time I get out. It, it was two weeks after I got out. She like, I probably can't get you in there. I'm like, all right, what's the next one? She like, February 28th. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm in there. So I get out, hurry up, sign up, uh, pay the money. She gave me, like, some little grant money. You know what I'm saying? So I had to pay the whole thing. So... She called me. Now that the date was supposed to be on February twenty eighth, she called me like three weeks before that. She like, man, she like Pepsi just put some of their drivers in there. She like, you ain't gonna be able to start till March. So I'm sad. She like, if somebody drop out though, I get you in there. So I'm like, all right, man, what I'm gonna do, man? What? Because I ain't trying to go to the street. I'm not doing nothing in the street. I was trying to door dash everything. Like, you know, I'm I'm not going to the street. I'm not selling no drugs. So she ended up calling me. She like. 
and you still trying to get in on February 28th? I'm like, you know I'm trying to get in. So she got me in February 28th, do the class for five weeks, and I took the test one time, passed it on my first um, on first turn. All right, shout out to that school. What what was what's the name of that school, man? That 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 uh that went above and beyond to get you in there despite your background. Uh, Stark State, Stark what? State, like they man what? campus. What is they, it they again? Man- what is it again? Stark, Stark State, like Stark County. Oh, Stark State. Okay, and they got and they got a uh and they got a truck driving academy. Uh, yep, that's yeah, connected to their. Yeah, that's connected to their um that's connected to their their what do you call it? What do you call that fucking shit? That that's connected to their college. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. That is what's up, bro. Okay, okay. So five weeks in, uh got your license now. How is there any dip well being that you, you know, you're a felon? You know, you got, you know, you were seven years down. A lot of these companies, a lot of these trucking companies uh, definitely feel some kind of way about felons. How 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 difficult it was or it is of you getting a, a, a trucking job. Oh, it's definitely that's definitely uh, an obstacle. You know, it's, it's having that felony. Is definitely an obstacle. It is not sweet out here if you got a felony. Anybody that's listening, tell your kids to keep or you anybody to keep your record clean. That is a man. That is like a black eye to the game having that felony. But uh, like I say, I I, I had my CDLs going on about two and a half weeks now. Seriously, on the job hunt for probably about a week, week and a half, and it's been hard. It's definitely been hard. I was at a place yesterday. And they ask about job history and this and that. I don't have job history. You know what I'm saying? I don't have, I don't have none. Like, I don't, I don't have no job history. So the place yesterday, they, they looking like they want to take me, but they don't got no health insurance. You know, it's delivering steel and all different type of dangerous shit. <laughs> you know, I ain't got no health insurance, you know? So, but, uh, they supposed to be calling me back here within the next day. And I'm so thirsty to drive. Like, I fell in love with truck driving. Like, I want to get out there. I, I don't, I don't even want an automatic. I want a manual. Like, I like six and gears, and I'm so thirsty to drive. If they call me back, I'm, I'm going to take it. You know, I'm going to take it and work for them at least for, like, six months to a year just to get – because I'm seeing a lot of the ads, like, uh, yeah, you got to have a year experience. So, I mean, I, I'm just ready to jump on it. And what a lot of these companies don't understand is hiring a felon that want to work Y'all don't really know how loyal we going to be. I'm going to be loyal to you because I can't find nothing else. So, of course, I'm going to stay with you. Like, they, they, they ain't looking at it like that, though. Damn, that's what's up, man. That That's that's what's up. And I know I, I know the difficulties of, of felons, you know, getting out here, trying to find a job, trying to stay on the state straight and narrow, trying to you know trying to get their lives right and and companies that's so thirsty for drivers is is giving you guys a hard time because of the background and you trying you trying to tell them that you're trying to you're trying to be right you're trying to act right but y'all y'all not giving me the opportunity to to, to get right man Yes, sir. That's 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 it right there, man. Like I say, whoever if you if they put me down with a job, somebody come here for a job, decent amount of pay. I ain't gotta be making. I ain't gotta come. I'm I'm so knowing that I'm new to this game. I'm not a no guy coming in saying I need to make two thousand a week. I'm not. I'm not like that. I really want to learn for real. I really want to learn some more. Get with a company that's gonna teach me and learn, and I will be loyal to them. But. I mean, we're going to see how it go. I'm out here putting these apps in, and that's what I was doing today, just shooting my number around. So what So what? What companies that you, you reached out to so far, and what was some of the, what was some of the reasons why they, why they rejected you? Uh, it was a couple of these local ones. Uh, it's this one local company that came in and spoke to my school. Uh, I really liked them too. And when I was at school, I asked them, I said, did you accept felons and stuff like that? 
And uh, they was like, oh, yeah, we saw the case-by-case thing. So I'm like, all right, well, my felony is seven years old. You know what I'm saying? It's older than seven years, you know? Even though I just did seven, but the, the, the initial date of catching the case is seven years old, you know? But I put the app in there, and I said, the lady said she was going to hit me back. I said, well, could you hit me back either way? Let me know yes or no. But she never got back with me. Uh, one thing I can say, uh, Western, they reached out to me. They was trying to get me to go down to Nashville or uh, Virginia, one of their hubs. But I I didn't know nothing. It was like, it, it was just shocked me because it was so soon. Like, they, the lady right on the phone, she like, okay, I'm going to get you down to Nashville. I'm like, damn. So... But I mean, you know, still, you you still. you know, restaurant express is like a second chance company. So they 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 reach out to you and and get you in there real quick, fast, in a hurry. But the only problem that that you might have that you're gonna have with restaurant is that the money is not there, though. And they and they do treat you any kind of way. So it's it's a good thing to keep Western on the on the back burner just in case because they will bring you in just go there get your experience and get out bro get out yeah, and that's yeah. about it but See, you, I, I, I needed to hear that See, y'all don't really you know I'm, I'm i'm a newbie in the game i really don't got no type of truck and mentor my my dude who drives he want me to get down with them on the on the dump truck side of things and like i told him the operation they got going i said it's cool but I feel like I want to get some over the road experience. Like I want to, I want to drive right now. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, Gabe, man, you know, much success to you in in in, in your newfound trucking career, man. Uh, I'm glad everything worked out for you. I appreciate you coming on to the show and uh, chopping it up with me, man. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. So, Gabe, man, stay up. We're from Ohio, man. So this this ain't gonna be the last time, man. So keep in touch with me and let me know how it goes. All right, for sure, man. Keep in touch with me, man. I appreciate you reaching out. Feel there's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water, in the the water, in the water.